Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Shop new looks for the new year at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like sweaters from Clubroom, Alfani, Inc., and more. $19.99 to $29.99. And get 40 to 60% off coats and boots. Then add the finishing touch to any look with fine jewelry clearance, 70% off. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Get your space ready for the year ahead at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like three-piece comforter sets, $24.99. Get creative in the kitchen with cookware sets, just $39.99. And prep for a future getaway with 65 to 75% off luggage closeouts from Samsonite, Travel Pro, Delsey, and more. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Hey, what's going on? What are you guys up to? Oh, uh, little weed, you know. It's the Weedsman Podcast Nugget. Is it pretty what? Ready to drop the bass? Let's drop the bass. whoop de doo What does it all mean? All the random stuff that didn't fit in Friday's show you'll find here. Oh. Okay. Hey, man. You got a joint? Got a little bit of reflux smell on your boy. what that mean? Please, give me, just give me my weed, all right? I am prepped today. I know. We, yeah, had to, we both dropped the prep ball last show. Well, no, I mean, I was like, I was prepped for material wise. <laughs> you prepped medication wise? Yes, I have all of my drugs today. <laughs> I had plenty of marijuana in my system last episode. We had to cut it short a little bit because well, I, w- I didn't have any of my other drugs really. Well, I had nicotine. Right, but I have a lot of drugs that I that I rely on. I didn't have my coffee. I didn't have my sugar, which I'm counting as a drug. It's true, it is. And I didn't have my Claritin, and I didn't have my I think it's called Seraflow or something like that. It's whatever my uh, I believe it's called Vagisil. My <laughs> saying it wrong. <laughs> my steroid inhaler. The end result is that I was left run down. And then just confused. Super high. <laughs> well, like my brain wasn't connected. I was having thoughts and I would either not know how to vocalize them or I just would forget or I would just like, it was like, like I had, it was like I was a novice smoker. Like words, I have the best words. <laughs> right. I was like a totally stable genius. <laughs> a very stable <laughs> genius. <laughs> the show is totally legal and totally cool. Mm. That that needs to be the name of our first episode when we actually have legal recreational in the state. Totally legal and totally cool. Totally legal and totally... Those are the the best Trump quotes. Nothing's ever... I don't care what else he says for the rest of his presidency. Nothing's stopping. Totally stable genius. Totally legal and totally cool. <laughs> when did he say totally legal and totally cool? I'd have to look it up. I do not remember. But he said that like he was asked about... Or maybe it's very cool. Oh, it was very legal and very cool. That's what it was. Or no, maybe it was a tweet. I've bearing the lead here because the story is from AOL.com. Yeah, that's, I found the same one. That was the first one that popped AOL up. AOL is still around? <laughs> he says, uh, against all odds, I decided to run for president and continue to run my business. Very legal and very cool. Well, during the campaign, yes. Oh, technically, isn't he divested now from all of his... Isn't DJ TJ running the show now? Yeah, which uh, apparently part of Michael Cohen's testimony was that he quoted Trump as saying... I think he he called Donald Trump Jr. like unreliable. Or that he doesn't have... Oh, oh, he has very poor judgment, I think it was. Oh, did you see this story today that... The BuzzFeed writer who wrote that debacle a few weeks ago said that the, uh, the Cohen's testimony said, hey, yeah, but that's kind of right. Wait, which story? The BuzzFeed story that came out a few weeks ago where oh. people ended up having to retract. They were like, hey, we're not really. And the writer right. said it. Hey, he, what he said, it, it made me kind of right. I was like, yeah, it was, it was clear. I was reading the story like, 
is Monday morning and we need to fill time, people, huh? That's ridiculous because the... the it says it makes the thesis of his story correct. No, it doesn't. It does not, absolutely, because you didn't know. That's the point. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it turns out to be true or not. You were reporting on conjecture. You were looking at certain facts and extrapolating and reporting that as fact. That's the problem, not whether you turn out to be right or wrong. That's why there's no hope for these fucking idiots. Well, they like, don't even know what game they're playing anymore. It's, it's, well, it's like, it's like just because you, you picked the lotto numbers doesn't mean you are now right. good at prognosticating lotto numbers. You, you guessed. Right. You, you, it, you may have ended up being right. That, that's, there's so much. That's why I try and stay away from like this Jesse Smollett thing. We, I know we talked about this on, regi- on Unregimented, but there's, there's nothing to be gained, and there's so much of this out there of people going, I'm calling it that you know this guy's guilty or this guy's innocent or this didn't happen, and then it turns out not to. And I'm like, oh, you're, so we're supposed to think that you're a fucking genius now? Yeah. Because you picked one out of two possible answers and said, I called it, and then retweeted it when it turned out to be true? You know, like a hate crime prognosticator. Or do, we, or do we have to go through your whole Twitter feed and find the ones that you called that didn't turn out to be true and weigh it against that? That's what's more important. How, how well, often are you true? <laughs> Can you yeah. make a call and be right? Yeah. A 50-50 call. It's the old trope, broken clock right twice a day. Trump's going to jail. I ca- I'm calling it right now. Like oh so you you're gonna you're a genius now if Trump actually goes to jail you knew all but along for what would be my question yeah no, I mean just as an example what if he like snaps and then shoots the whole White House staff and that's how he goes to jail nobody saw that coming I wonder which drug I'm most addicted to well I mean most addicted would be asthma and allergy medication in the respects that I'm not gonna have I I will have physical withdrawals as in runny nose. Hives, can't fucking breathe. <laughs> you know, those are, those are, could be considered withdrawal symptoms. But other than that, I bet coffee. I, th- I think it might be coffee. Like, if I didn't have weed, right, I can make it through a day and then the night going to sleep is going to be kind of rough. But I can do it if I need to. Oh, the it. coffee and nicotine. Nicotine. I would get irritated. That would last probably about a week. You know, I would get really irritated about dumb shit, but I'd move on. Coffee, I think my productivity would just, in all aspects, would just go <laughs> down the drain. That's the one that would really hobble me if I didn't have access to it. See, I'll drink it during the week, but not so much on the weekends. Yeah, I'm, I'm constant. I'm home during the weekend, so I'm making like three pots a day. That pot, I make like, it's like a quarter of a pot or something. My 71 year old Making enough for like two mugs. Always at drinking a, time. a cup of coffee. So on a day off, eight mugs, eight cups of coffee is probably what I'll drink. Like every time I go over to my mom's house, hey, you want a cup of coffee? Sure, why like not? Even, even late at night? I see you later. Oh, yeah, having a cup of coffee after dinner. Oh, that's the best. You have to have the coffee after the dinner. I, I like to sleep. Like, that's the thing for me. Oh, like, yeah, I am really, really sensitive to caffeine and stimulants. Yeah, I used to be, and then I started drinking coffee regularly. But so did I, but I still am. Like, I can't go to Starbucks. I cannot. And if I do go to Starbucks, I'm getting something that I am nursing all day long. Because if I drink it right away, I'll be all jittery and weird. I, I, I like never drink. I don't think I've, I'm not sure I've ever had just a, well, probably when they first started popping up everywhere. I probably actually had some Starbucks coffee. Starbucks is number, I, I saw an infographic. They are number two for most coffee, for most caffeine in their coffee. Number one is the coffee bean and tea leaf. Is that a is it like a store or a brand? Yeah, it's just another. It's fancy ass. Bu- it's fancy ass chain. So you oh okay. So they have their own stores, their own. Yeah, is it a restaurant you would or see is in it a just mall. a brand of coffee? The closest one I can tell you to us is at the airport. I have Seven Eleven coffee, which oh, that was like number. Uh, it, it was higher on the list than you'd think. No, was it? 
I mean, that's a pretty big variable. Starbucks and, and big chains like that that rely on coffee, they have to have consistency, like a Big Mac. It is expected that when you walk into a Starbucks anywhere in the world, well, at least the U.S., let's say, a, a coffee is going to taste like coffee. What's that? I don't know. I, coffee flavor coffee? Seven Eleven is like decent enough, not too pricey, although it really tastes like beans. I know it's kind of a dumb thing to say when you're drinking a drink made of ground up beans. Not even ground up beans, the runoff from ground up beans. <laughs> this is true. I don't know. It has a dirty flavor to it. Well, if you're drinking shit coffee, yeah. What kind of dirt coffee you drink? <laughs> I very rarely or do you drink. Say it generally tastes like dirt. Seven Eleven coffee generally tastes like dirt. Yes, I usually only drink Seattle's best, number four, which has been, I mean, almost as long as we've been doing this show. Oh uh, yeah, you know, used to be the house brew around here, and then I discovered Dutch Brothers out in Oregon. I find no need to. I, Look, I'm a man of habits when it comes to the things that I'm going to need day in and day out. Oh no, I don't want to think about that shit, right? So you asked me if I was still vaping the Jade Tiger. Yeah. Like, why Why would I change? Right? <laughs> like, unless there was a news bulletin that this specific flavor caused cancer, I'd see no reason to explore. I, and it's not that I'm not curious. You know, I love reading books and watching movies and learning about new things. I keep up, you know, with the somewhat with the sciences and whatnot as much as the average man can. But I need that's where I want my brain power to be focused on things that actually need it, not exploring coffee options. Shop new looks for the new year at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like sweaters from Clubroom, Alfani, Inc., and more. $19.99 to $29.99. And get 40 to 60% off coats and boots. Then add the finishing touch to any look with fine jewelry clearance, 70% off. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Get your space ready for the year ahead at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like three-piece comforter sets, $24.99. Get creative in the kitchen with cookware sets, just $39.99. And prep for a future getaway with 65 to 75% off luggage closeouts from Samsonite, Travel Pro, Delcy, and more. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. ChristopherMedia.net. The Weedsman Podcast. Google's like your mom. And when it finds out that you liked something once, it's like, I know that you like Led Zeppelin. Here's, you read a Led Zeppelin story that one time. Here's every story this week about Led Zeppelin. Oh, no, yeah, my Google for you is crazy because all the stuff I look up for podcasts. Yeah. Mine's kind of a crossover of, like, comic book stuff, music stuff, and podcast stuff. But I... Let's see, what's it have for me? I've been reading uh, a lot of headlines about Led Zeppelin members uh, embattled. <laughs> Led Zeppelin's embattled? Not, not in battle, but what am I trying to say? Embattled. They are stealing all their music. There's lots of conflict. Con- conflict. Oh, they don't like each other. They're all <laughs> no, not crotchety. between them. Between them and other musicians, specifically. Why is that? Remember the the Taurus controversy. The uh, 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 what's what's the band Slade? No, not Slade. Spirit. Yes. The what, band that they, they were su- they sued, and I guess they tried multiple times to sue. For that song, I mean, if you listen to Taurus, you you'll hear the similarities, but they're not. They haven't. It's only like the first two chords that are the same, right? I mean, yeah. if we're gonna go for like the first eight measures, yeah. If that's grounds for handing over cash, then you might as well not monetize music. It's pointless. Well, it's kind of from what I hear, it's kind of that point, anyways. Now, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I mean. 
I've been curious, and not a lot of artists have been talking about, until recently have they been really talking about streaming and what's going on with that. It I think fucked. I think they didn't want to get an kicked album out of the streaming. game. I get no money every month. Oh, well, We've yeah. never gotten any money. Right. I mean, if it generates anything, unless it's over a certain point, then that's all going to, like, you know, server fees and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Come on, Spotify. Come on, Google. I know we're on Google. I read that more dollars were spent in the U.S. on CD and vinyl sales than were on MP3 downloads. <laughs> right. Torrents are still a thing. But it it does show that just because you can get it for free doesn't mean that you don't want the thing, the physical thing. Mm-hmm. So, embattled so, Zeppelin. Oh, yeah. Well, I I guess they were getting death threats from... from well, let's see here. Francis described getting death threats and having to carry a gun before... Hold on. Let me back up here a second. Francis Malafi is... Francis Malafi is representing spirit guitarist Randy Wolf, better known as Randy California. <laughs> Wasn't that James Spader on The Office? <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it Randy California or Randy Wolf? Randy California. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, James. So he's so spirit guitarist Randy California has brought the lawsuit. Malafi. Malafi. Oh, Robert California. Robert is close. His brother. And uh, so he, uh, I guess this was during when he was uh, right. Oh, this has nothing to do with Led Zeppelin. This is Led Zeppelin fans. It says, uh, this is a headline. Led Zeppelin scary death Did you get threats. Clickbaited? Led Zeppelin scary death threats from lawsuit revealed. And then he goes on to describe it carrying around a gun while he's representing Randy California, afraid that people are going to assault him, fans of Led Zeppelin. This is his quote, uh, quote from the article Hidden behind an unmarked door on the basement floor of a nondescript office building in Media, with capital M. The law firm of Francis Alexander LLC is a pretty punk rock operation. Well, this is a long way around. Malify, who's 41, brags. Given the sheer number of death threats he says he's received from apoplectic Zepp fans, the fact that mysterious cars seem to follow him in the night and his claim to have found GPS trackers stuck to the bottom of his car, the precise location of his offices remains... A closely guarded secret. Failing that, he has a license to carry. In most days, he leaves the house packing a thirty-eight caliber Smith & Wesson. So who knows? Who knows if any of that's true? But it's not Led Zeppelin going after Randy California's lawyer. This guy's done some serious drugs. That's some paranoid shit. Yeah, I mean, he's just paranoid, huh? Plus, he's from that age. I mean, everyone carried a revolver. You're, if you were working in the music industry... <laughs> yeah, but that's an ankle... <laughs> But there, okay, so there was a story that I read about an actual conflict between a Led Zeppelin member, and it was it was Jimmy, Jimmy Page punched John Paul Jones. Jimmy Page I called him a sissy versus Robbie, no, Robbie Plant, no, British pop star, contemporary. Oh, Rod, like Robbie Williams, maybe. Yeah, he was big for like six months here, twenty years ago. Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page disrespected by Robbie Williams. I guess Robbie Williams was, he wanted to build, he wanted to expand his basement and have like a game room or some shit. Who gives a fuck what he wants? He wants to build on his own property, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess Jimmy Page filed a grievance because he was concerned that that construction would mess up his house in some fashion. Is it a leafy that was going to break? Yeah. Probably did the construction. This is Jimmy's. This is his argument in court. So, yeah. Your Honor, when the levee breaks, got no place to stay. The pair had been at loggerheads ever since William submitted plans for a basement gym and pool at his seventeen million dollar West London home five years ago. Page objected. Your Honor, as he fe- if it keeps on raining, he feared excavation work would damage his. 19 or 1875 grade I or grade one listed mansion. I don't, 
It's some sort of British classification of houses, I would imagine. 1875. The musician had lived at that property known as Tower House, designed by William Burgess, for 40 years and referred to it as one of the most historic buildings in the borough. So I, I guess uh, Robbie Williams was actually blasting uh, Black Sabbath. Yeah. And Pink Floyd and Deep Purple. <laughs> this can't be a recent story. Americans need to stop reusing their condoms. <laughs> CDC warns. Oh, just, please, are please, we, <laughs> please be from The Onion. Please, please, please be from The Onion. This is from The Independent, a British newspaper. The CDC, or the Centers for Deep Disease Purple. Control, warning to sexually active Americans. Active Americans to stop washing and reusing condoms. Who is doing this? Because unbelievably, unbelievably, quote, people do it. <laughs> According to the CDC, people actually do it. Please, this is from the Onion. Ha ha! April Fool a month early. Well, use a fresh one for each sex act. Exactly. We're both just stunned in silence. I, like <laughs> what? We live here. This is happening. Fewer than half of U.S. high schools met the CDC's requirement for sexual education in 2015. That's no big surprise. So that might be part of it right there. I, I wasn't taught about condoms. It wasn't, and it wasn't like this was some new technology, right? And this is, this is during a time when, yeah, there was some, there was some debate. And this was based actually on a, on a one story that was either like misrepresented or, or misreported in some way. The idea that the AIDS virus could get through a condom. But the general belief was that well, the Pac-Man version it's sure could. not going to hurt. Like, you should, if you're going to have sex, you should be wearing condoms. You know, I was going to high school in the 90s. Yeah. They, that should have been That's like a cold no shower. Brainer. And I was not taught about condoms. I might have been, maybe it was mentioned like they exist. You know, this is a thing that you can use, but I was never shown one, yeah, I was shown how to operate one without breaking it. The first 10 years of school for it. me was just pretend your penis doesn't exist. That's one of the most important things that you can I went to Catholic teach school. a kid in high school. Like, it, if you're going to teach them about sex education, they'll figure most of it out themselves. Trust me, just pinch the tip and roll down. Like, it's not that hard. Well, no, it should be a little bit hard. Yeah. <laughs> hey. But, We'll be here all week, folks. You know, and and then where the clitoris is. That's really <laughs> it, right? The eh, rest you know the rest comes naturally. Try right. if a curious person can, you know, find this shit out on their own. Well now I mean, what is sex education like in the age of internet and your in the, phone? Yeah, in the age of by by the uh, age of eleven you've seen ass to mouth. That's right. I mean I I would hope that it would be something like maybe breaking some common myths like not every girl wants your cum in her hair not not a gamer anyway and if she's not shouting it doesn't mean that she's not necessarily enjoying it and not all girls have orgasms with their vaginas or from their vaginas or whatever it's true there are two types of two types of orgasms they never teach you anything useful Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. Shop new looks for the new year at Macy's One Day Sale. Going on now with deals of the day like sweaters from Clubroom, Alfani, Inc., and more. $19.99 to $29.99. And get 40 to 60% off coats and boots. Then add the finishing touch to any look with fine jewelry clearance, 70% off. Plus, get your dot-com orders fast with contact-free curbside pickup. Or you can pick them up inside the store. For details, visit Macy's.com. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. 
Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead. Dare to stream with Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. ChristopherMedia.net If you like this show, please tell a friend. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for listening, and thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net.